3, 2, 1. Hello everyone and welcome to my speedrun of Transistor. Today I'm going to commentate this with um, Kadarev, the current world record holder of both categories. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hello, that's me. I've also played this game a few times. Exactly. Well, um, this is a small indie game that has some tactical um, battles in there. So it has turn-based and real-time battle. And that makes it pretty interesting because we can exploit a couple of things in there to to get the movement a little bit better. And let's just get right into it. So tech, don't panic. Timer starts when he pulls out the sword. Yeah, exactly. So as soon as I um, press the button, a button here, it's gonna pull out the sword, and the timer starts. I'm gonna do this in three, two, one. Go. Good okay. Luck. Thank you much. First, we got like two skills here. Uh, I gotta. That's sometimes a problem with it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it just Bad. takes out the um, instant fire. So I have to re enable this. And so far, we only know um, real, li real time battle here. This one too much. Um, basically it's just a tutorial right now, we're learning how to fight in real time and now we're learning how to fight in um, turn-based. So when we press space and we come into this turn-based mode, we can do different stuff here while um, our enemies can't move. And also we can queue up different attacks, so it's, it's gonna um, be used here instantly to attack them. That was the first tutorial. Mm -hmm. And you may have also noticed whenever um, we kill enemies, they drop some things. So these white blobs, they drop. Um, that's kind of a gimmick in this game. You have to collect those as well. Otherwise, the enemies are not defeated and they will respawn in 10 seconds. So the battles are only over once you collected those as well. Exactly. So we have to get those here, and right here we get another skill, um, also a very used one, it's called Spark, can just basically, at a, at a spot where we click, we can like spawn um, those balls that uh, make damage in an area, they would be very useful later especially, yes. once you get so another skill. It, exactly, so you just have to know that it is a very quick attack that deals damage in an area. That's all you need to know for now. Gonna have our first little mini boss here. It's the lady. Yes, and maybe you remember the white things I was talking about. So I hope you enjoy those here. <laughs> Gonna have a she lot of them. A few more. <laughs> So yeah, she's a bit special. Her um, cells, so that's what the white things are called, they um, turn into bad cells within a second or so. So yeah, that's a special property of this boss. But again, we had to get rid of all of those. We will have a little puzzle with the turn-based mechanic, where we can just queue up those um, two breaches to get the door open. This is probably our most used skill right here, or yes. most important <laughs> movement skill. It's called the chant. It's basically just a dash into a direction. Yeah, it has a very distinct sound, so right now you couldn't hear it too much, but you might want to get used to it because you'll hear it a lot. <laughs> and this is just the final tutorial fight, basically, where you kind of have free reign. You can do it however we also got a level up so when, with each level up you get to choose between uh, two skills that you can acquire the one we selected right now was not super important um, it has small usage later on and um, also here you get debated because you have to do the fight again exactly the game in 
And also you can see the life bar. Um, you don't have a game over if life bar reaches zero. What happens is first, if you are not on cooldown with your turn-based mechanic, you will get an emergency turn. So it automatically activates it for you as kind of a safe fail. If you are on cooldown, you will lose your uh, most expensive skill, so to say. So each skill has a different amount of points it takes from your skill cap. So basically, game over is when you are at zero HP and you have lost all of your active skills. So it's a bit weird at first, but don't worry, we will not have to care about that because Apple will definitely not come into that situation. Exactly. <laughs> also, you might have seen that I only like used the um, real-time combat, since, of course, turn-based combat is slow, since you got to queue up and then it takes um, time until everything um, goes through and also has to recharge all the abilities after and um, at the same time when you go into turn-based mode sometimes it's like discovers the enemy it sees a new enemy and then um, it's like a short cutscene where it says what that enemy does oh it's not really useful to be <laughs> used um, the turn-based combat. We use it for some other stuff, though. Yeah, we have our creative uses for it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, quite a few of the battles we have done so far. There is a second category called low percent, where you want to acquire as little XP as possible. So we could technically skip quite a few of these battles. However, they're very early on, so they're usually pretty quick to do. And we actually want quite a bit of XP at the start, because in the next room we will acquire a new skill because of the level up, and that one will be very important if we want to go fast. Also, we saw here the weeds, like the... These are like... Um, snake-like things. Mm -hmm. They recover the health of other enemies that are in their range. And that can be pretty annoying, so... We have to kill them off pretty quick. Oh, I missed that one there. That one is back here. So, okay, right, we get... Up. <laughs> level up is really nice here, since we get our uh, loads. <laughs> so, a load is basically just um, a package that we use to um, to set it somewhere and then detonate it with spark. Yes, so it heavily trivializes most of the fights because it deals an insane amount of damage in a rather large area around it. And that is pretty much enough to breeze through most fights, except for this one because it's another young lady. And if you remember how fun that was earlier, it's still about as much fun. Ah, we also have the cheerleaders here. Chillers are basically just protecting themselves or other enemies. Like this time again. It can be really annoying. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely one of the most RNG heavy parts. Not only because of the cheerleaders and their behavior, but also the direction these cells get spawned into. They're, it's completely random, so you can get some very good pattern, or you can get patterns like this one, where you have to clean up a lot afterwards. So we have here a little skip. <laughs> it's a really basic, just dashing through the wall with the um, chant. So, yeah, pretty much. Somewhat messes up the camera here, as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> Don't Maybe. worry, things are somewhat going fine. <laughs> and you can. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Okay, here we're coming to the stage. So, Red apparently is a really good singer and really famous singer as well. Which is a problem if you lost your voice. Exactly. Which she sadly has. So, this is like the first time we really hear about the story in this game. Also, some good music. Good. And some good cutscenes. Exactly.
So long story, very short, there is a group of four evil people that try to recreate the world by uh, attacking people with the transistor because it allows them to trap their souls basically and give them superpowers. And they attacked Red, but her boyfriend took the attack, so he died, she lost her voice, and now we have the transistor and uh, we try to stop them. Exactly. And also now we see right here one of them. One of those four people. <laughs> yeah, what remained of her? <laughs> Turned like into a monster. I'm not really, not really good for her. Also not for us. But we have a way to kill her pretty easily here. Yes. As she's uh. not getting <laughs> attacked by a cheerleader. Okay, yeah, so yeah, there we no go. Worries. Still, you can see load heavily trivialized this. So the first two phases, Apple was able to just one shot her. The third one you can also one shot, but it's a bit more of a peculiar, peculiar timing. Yeah, especially with the cheerleaders. Exactly. But what helps there is that there is some downtime in between the phases, so you can actually prepare your load packages. And with this level up, we got a skill called Help. That allows you to summon a pet dog that attacks enemy for you that will not be useful except for the very last fight. So keep that in mind. Exactly. So this is also already the next cutscene. <laughs> you can, by the way, do something in this cutscene. Like you can press yeah. left um, trigger and just jump. Or a spacebar even. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> but yeah, we cannot skip the cutscenes. Um, which is, of course, not helpful for the speedrun, but that doesn't matter too much because the cutscenes are really good. So what basically happened to Sybil there, who we just fought, is... Um, so the plan of these guys was to unleash some kind of alien entity called uh, the Process. But of course, that entity um, got out of control and now they're just rampaging everywhere and she got affected by it and turned into one of them. So right. now we have to care about those guys and the process. So exactly. what could go wrong? Right now you see a trick I haven't used in the run yet. It's like... Yeah. Uh, Can you just move, move up right? Move up right? Ah, yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah. It's like some oh, out of bounds fine. movement. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, used a lot from this point on. Like, but like out of bounds wasn't not that much, but we can like skip the boundaries with the chant. Mm -hmm. Like here comes another one, so we gotta so walk into a specific spot and then just chant right here. And you see, like the blue lines didn't appear that normally appear in a fight. So I can just walk um, around freely. Don't have to fight those there. Yeah, we still have to finish this fight though. It's already loaded. The problem is if we would not do this fight, then the rest of the level wouldn't really load. So we have to do one fight, and this one is way faster and gives also quite a bit of XP. Exactly. If just two low packages and two sparks, we can just annihilate them. Here also... Um, you don't get a chant right here. There's some sections where you can't chant for some reason. And then you just gotta walk. Yeah, there are multiple ways where we can trigger this out of bounds state. Um, you saw a few there, you will see some more. It's quite difficult to go through all of them, but we'll try our best to cover them as they come up. Because there is another one coming up here, somewhat. Well, it's not really out of bounds, it's more of a fight skip. But similar setup. There we go. So, the thing with Jaunt, the uh, dash skill, is that it only really checks for collision at the start and the end point. So anything in between you can just go through, including nothing there, so that's how we were able to skip the fight trigger. So, and now auto-scrollers! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> 
Luckily, the spawns here are always the same, so we know where the enemies appear. And luckily, we also have load, so nothing really matters. I can just get them here and like get the dropping cells. Oh, it didn't quite kill him. Yeah, something. Not sure what happened there. Doesn't matter. This whole fight is timed, anyways. We have some breathing room. Yeah, the elevators have to... <laughs> it's mainly a lot of waiting. <laughs> okay, here comes up another skip. Good. That worked, very nice. <laughs> yeah, so this is similar to the one we had at the start of this level, where you can somewhat trigger the fight, but not the boundaries. So since the fight is already going on, this one also doesn't trigger the low, uh, the barriers. So we just get a dog running after us if we are faster. <laughs> Trying to attack us here. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> it's fine. I also, can take the fine. head. I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> so some good perspective skip here because that made sense. <laughs> but yeah, still the first fight is active, so this one also doesn't load correctly. More elevators. Okay, coming up to bracket towers. So here we saw in the background, we saw like a big thing flying around. That's like, that's called the spine. It's gonna be our first like actual boss in this game. Not even considering Sybil to be a boss, that's rude. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so the idea of this level is that you can, or you should technically slowly progress through uh, through it, and the spine constantly attacks you, as you will see here, coming down from the ceiling, basically. Um, Apple is taking some intentional damage here, because what we want to do is we want to get to one of these um, info terminals, where our movement is frozen. But if we reach zero HP while we're at it, we can regain movement and we still have this screen up. There you go. Okay. Now and can... what, that, yeah, what that allows us is to cancel it basically at any time, which in itself doesn't really help us too much. But as it turns out, if you do that while in a forced movement transition, like right there, Apple was in somewhat of, a, of an elevator, if you cancel out of your menu screen, you can use the turn-based pause during that transition. And when you exit it, you have no collision, basically. And that allows you to go out of bounds and skip pretty much everything in this level. We still have to fight the boss. And we have to go a somewhat specific route here to load the rest of the level. Sometimes you can just get stuck. But yeah, this definitely helps us to cut out quite a bit of this level. And here the camera will get frozen, so you kind of have to maneuver blindly, but the goal is to hit the boss trigger and then the camera will snap back. Also, there are like different states in this. So there's a state where you're um, not invisible, but invulnerable. <laughs> there's a state where you're invisible and invulnerable, invulnerable, like I am right now. But there's also a state where you can be invisible and vulnerable, so <laughs> you really don't want that. <laughs> so I yeah, so mostly just like to check if um, if I can um, attack or if I can like, take damage. Because yeah, I also so fight is actually hard. Yeah, so since we got, we want to be at zero HP to trigger the entire glitch, that's not good for fights, obviously, so it's somewhat good coincidence that we are invulnerable here at the boss fight because we would take a lot of damage there are a lot of hits you would take so that adds up quite nicely so we could finish off spine really easily and with this getting the blast attack on him on the heart and that's that and we will get quite a lot of xp here in case you're wondering, yes, you can skip this fight. 
but it takes a stupidly long setup to do and uh, we would miss out on all of this XP because we still want more XP since we want to hit a somewhat specific level around a somewhat specific time. So we have a bit of leeway, but the goal is to reach level 6 before the end game, so to say. We have to take the terminal here or we can't progress. We can just skip through it, so not a big yeah. problem. So these info terminals are supposed to like give you more of a background of this entire world and what's happening. There are some that are required like that one. Coming and up here to, to the to... firewall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you saw there on the right a rather big gate. It's guarded by two seals that we have to unlock. So Not a big fan thing. of this skip here. <laughs> exactly because of that. I don't know really like to really like to get stuck there. <laughs> At least we have a checkpoint right there, so that's good. Oh, okay. So the boundary is low. So this is same as earlier where we can jaunt in a way that the fight doesn't trigger at all, but it is like a very tight space that we have to hit. That's why we like have to do it in two ah. goes, basically. Can't seem to get it right now. We really don't want to do this fight. It's not a fun <laughs> fight. But I'm glad it's glad this access point is right here. Exactly. <laughs> Developers thought about us. Could have made the safe space a bit bigger. To be yeah, honest. maybe. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Please patch seven years after release. Thank you. Not getting into the right zone there. No worries. Ah, those close. Okay. Ah, there we go. There we go. Nice. So this fight we cannot skip because it just loads you right into the fight after the elevator. But at least you get to see some more of these launch pads here. And we kind of have to use them to get to three platforms where these enemies are. So I always do a spark here before um, I do a, put down a load. Because this, these are the weed 3.0s. And they just spawn another one if you hit them. Very nice. So this level up is completely pointless from the skills we get pretty much, so it doesn't matter what we take. Yeah, that's not what I wanted. Let's do that. Okay, I got it. It's nice. So this is another way to get the out of bounds. Um, Basically, there was this terminal, but there was a launch pad right next to it, which is very convenient. It's probably a little bit too early. Uh, yeah. Oh well. Um, but yeah, since the launch pad is right next to the uh, terminal, it allows you to basically interrupt your um, state where you would just read the terminal again and allows you to trigger the out of bounds. So that's that fight, and now we uh, <clears throat> unlock the first seal. So, basically, we just want to open um, the big gate right here. Exactly. So you saw the left side was green. You can kind of sneak a peek there. The right side is still red. So we gotta open here as well. 
haven't saved for some time. <laughs> SP. <laughs> Let's not get back to our last save. <laughs> you another small fight skip, but this one is very basic. You can just, again, jaunt through that uh, gap there and skip the fight trigger. So. This is not a fight skip right here, but like a manipulation. Ah, it did not work. Um, if it works, it only spawns those two snapshots right here. Yeah, it's really strange. So basically it just, like, doesn't load all of the enemies for reasons. Um, but it's not, like, super important. This one is probably the easiest one in the whole game. Yeah. <laughs> like super lenient as long as you like even just uh john through a tiny bit of that gap it doesn't load fight but yeah that was the second lock so now we the gate is unlocked but we have some visitors here but luckily they ignore us for as long as we don't attack them so we can kind of prepare some loads for them Okay, worked out pretty well. Can be annoying, sometimes they um, notice you when you're a little bit too close. And then the, 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 big, the big robot, it's called the jerk, just runs at you and um, can be very annoying, especially with also <laughs> the snapshots and the cheerleader in the back. So this is where we come up to the next two out of the four bad guys that I mentioned earlier. Big fight, oh no. <laughs> Hope you're prepared. I'm always prepared. <laughs> well good, because you will not need it. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, they took the cheap way out, so to say. They realized what they had done and didn't want to face the consequences. Which... To be fair, also saves us quite a bit of time. And also we get some information out of them, so that's very nice for us. Mm -hmm. And basically, now we... This is kind of the furthest we progress in the game, because from here on it will be backtracking more or less, but the world has changed in the meantime. The process has devoured more and more of the world, so you will maybe recognize a few of the places we visit, but they will look differently, so... That's interesting. But first, cutscene. Exactly. Yeah, one guy left, uh, it's Royce, we have to visit him, but first we have to make our way through quite a few enemies, so this you may not recognize, but this is where we fought Sybil earlier, this is the empty set, the stage. We are loaded into a fight here, but if we go out of the way quickly enough, the enemy, so the dog there, doesn't attack us immediately, so we can again place some loads there. Here our like, all of our skills are taken away just for, like, story slash cinematic purposes, so we just have to walk, but we'll regain them soon enough. For a very fun skip. Exactly. Or, well, fun <laughs> skip. Fight skip, I guess, somewhat. Okay. Oh, a save point. <laughs> I really like that. Yes. <laughs> Last time I did this, I, I did not get it. It was a bad mistake. <laughs> Okay, we got it. That's good. So this one is a bit weird because it doesn't trigger immediately when you go around the corner, which is nice, but it would trigger very early afterwards, so you have to jump into a very precise spot. 
So again, the fight triggered, but the barriers didn't. So we can just ignore everyone. We're completely fine with that. This is just like... There's no boundaries here, it's just a lot of enemies walking around, doing stuff, whatever they wanna do. <laughs> we can just walk by. So we by. also just do whatever we do. <laughs> yeah, they do attack us here, but there are no barriers holding us back. And now we get introduced to the last type of enemy, so they're called men, and they're pretty special. So basically every man has a special ability as long as they're alive. Which doesn't really matter for this one because... It's not long, it's, it's not alive for long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's all by himself, the poor guy. Um, but yeah, soon we will have multiple men in the same fight and they have abilities like cloaking each other for a certain amount of time or speeding up their movements, regenerating health and so on. So and we have so some... Sorry. No, go ahead. We have some turn-based movements um, that we mainly use to um, like interrupt them before they actually can do something. So that's pretty useful at this point. Exactly. So we have some strats that should work. <laughs> and maybe you remember when I earlier said we want to reach level 6 at a certain point. That point should come up soon. And what level 6 does, it gives us the um, skill called get. And get in the first, like in the primary slot, allows us to pull enemies towards us, which is very helpful if we place a load package in front of us. So we can just do that and then pull all of them towards us and deal a lot of damage. And that is a very efficient way to get rid of the men enemies. So here we acquired a skill. The menemies, exactly. <laughs> Here we're back at our poster. Yes, this is where we got the spark skill. And you so, might remember this bridge here. <laughs> yeah, we're deep into tutorial territory here. Going with the hello world again. And here we have two men now, but we also have Get. And then you can see they're cloaked right now, which is one of their abilities. So we try to bait this one out, destroy him with the loads. So now the other one is not cloaked anymore. And we can also get rid of him. Okay. And this is the one downside of any percent of a low percent, because in low <laughs> percent at least you get to skip this dialogue. But I wish. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> in any percent we don't get to do that, um, because it's actually, like, skipping this part is also requires a very long setup. Um, so it's actually faster to just go through it. So basically we just talked to, to Royce here, the last one of the camaradas of the bad guys. And he kind of gets him to him, uh, gets us to him. So we take that for... Granted. Yeah, we take the offer. He doesn't really want to face us right now. I wonder why that is. But uh, yeah, we're talking to him via this proxy that runs around and sometimes actually can get in your way. So yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> the key to like, for example, go through an elevator or go through a level transition is the same key as like talking to people. So if you're really lucky, then Royce will get just in front of you when you want to switch levels and then you start talking to him. And he has this tendency to talk for quite a while, so you hope, hopefully, we will not get that. Here, um, we change our loadout yeah, yeah. Sure for the end game. <laughs> um, it's like we will still basically follow the same kind of principle with load, but as I said earlier, we also got the get skill. So now the idea is to place load packages in front of our feet because we don't have the range upgrade anymore for that skill. And instead pull the enemies towards us with get and then just blow up the load package. Just standing out of the way of the proxy here. Don't want to talk also, to him. <laughs> this makes sense, don't worry about it. Yeah. Gravity exists. Definitely not teleporting through different 
dimensions or whatever here. Oh, yeah, I missed that one. I mean, you can still put down the loads as long as you get rid of the, the heads. Yeah, these are. Yeah, that's the main problem. So the men, men have these head um, projectiles. Let's get this one. Okay, that's one of them, good. Sadly not the one. Ah, actually it was the one that closed probably. I don't know. <laughs> I can't tell them apart. But yeah, so they have these projectiles called head. And they're homing missiles that start out very slow but get progressively faster when they come towards you. Okay. And they also deal area damage so they would blow up your load packages, so they can be very annoying. Okay, here we have another skip. So, basically, we queue up the animation to um, get to the access point. Okay, if, if I get the right timing here. Yeah, so the idea is you can um, access the, or you can start the access point. Whenever you interact with an access point, the game saves. But we can transfer this saving to the fight. So now it's saved inside the fight, which it shouldn't do. And now we can reload the checkpoint and we saved inside the fight. So now the fight doesn't properly spawn. We're going to our last area now, or like the second last area, I guess, <laughs> or the last area, at least before the boss fight. Exactly. And some more men to fight, except this time it's three of them. So let me get that one. It's really annoying if you don't get one, get that one, and you cut with something here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was a little bit too slow. But I should get a lot of damage in here, so. Yeah, this guy. Yeah, I mean he has five there HP go. left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just tried to run away. No way out here. So that was actually, hopefully, the last fight that we have to do. There is another one in our way, but we should be able to skip that one. Yeah, more um, logical move in this game here. <laughs> So this last one is another one of those where we just have to jaunt in some very precise spots. Last, well, okay. I mean, technically there is also a fight skip here, but this one is also very trivial again. It's just like, turn to the side and you're good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Next one, not that lenient. Yeah, this one can be quite annoying. Especially because you gotta go around the corner here. Then, yeah, that worked, okay. And now, usually you would just progress down the hallway and there are like a lot of barriers in our way. Like not fight barriers, just uh, these red barriers you see here. And the idea is... I didn't get um, it. Yeah, damn. <laughs> so, well, now you will see what the idea is. <laughs> so Royce will talk to us. You can see Royce there up on his podium. He will talk to us and one after the other disable these barriers. So there's this like cinematic build up to the final confrontation. Um, but again, we would have been able to transfer the save from the checkpoint behind the first barrier. So we would be able to save the game after that barrier, which we obviously shouldn't since there is no access point there. Mm -hmm. If we would have reload the checkpoint there, we could have jaunted through all of these barriers. It's a not like it is a okayish time save, but not like yeah. super duper important. It's like mm, I go for it. If it doesn't work, I just yeah. roll with it. It's probably the best idea. Yeah, because the setup also takes a while. Okay. Now we're going right. to put the transistor into um, its cradle. Put the transistor into the large transistor. Exactly. So that means the game is over, right? Yeah, finally we have <laughs> we have reworked the world and everything is fine. Nice. Oh wait. I know you can hear me. I won't let you go. So it turns out we are not the only one with a transistor. Mm-hmm. That's unlucky. 
So now we have a friendly chat, friendly chat with our good pal Royce here. And this is quite interesting uh, final boss fight because since he also has a transistor, he also gets the ability to go into these turn-based actions. And the first turn-based action is all, always belongs to him. However, we have a strat that should allow us to basically one-shot him in every of his four phases. And for that, we use the help skill that I mentioned earlier, which allows us to summon a pet dog. Because as it turns out, if your pet dog attacks your load packages, it duplicates them, which means we can place one load package, attack it three times with the dog, and that just, um, yeah, deals quite a substantial damage. It's very useful. Yes. <laughs> Also, we like to do the chant into our um, passive, mm -hmm. since oh, that is the wrong order. It is not the load. <laughs> you are not load. You are load. <laughs> yeah. So putting jaunt into our passive slot allows us to reduce the cooldown on our uh, turn-based actions, or until we can do the turn base again. But yeah, as I said, first he will do his turn. Then we will get our pet doggy, and then hopefully everything will be all right. So basically just want to stun lock him once we have the chance to attack. Mm -hmm. Phase one. Skills so far. That is phase two. And three. And you might know what happens in the last phase as well. Mm -hmm. Not time, by the way. We still have something to do. Exactly. And that's the Royce fight. Very convenient in any percent, not so convenient in low percent, because you actually <laughs> don't get the help skills, so you have to fight him the intended way, which is substantially less fun. Now we are at like this point where we, um, where we made the bridge to Fairview, but kind of everything is um, covered by like the process. So we can uncover that with our, with our voice, for humming. And we're coming up on time soonish, so you might want to hover your finger above the split key. It's basically just pressing E at those four blocks. It's <laughs> intense gameplay. Yeah, exactly. I had to practice this a lot. <laughs> yes, optimal movement. <laughs> and you might remember this from the beginning. So time comes up and once I press the E button, now. Okay. Yeah, we're getting back at the beginning. Um, basically where we left off, where we um, collected the tr transistor out of our boyfriend and yeah um, comes up is kind of brutal <laughs> <laughs> but she kind of wants to be the, uh, back together with her boyfriend so she just, just does one way to do it yeah collect herself with the transistor I guess mm -hmm. Happy end question mark? <laughs> More or less, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just the world that is inhabited now, uninhabited now, but uh, at least we're back together. But um, this is a very cool game overall. GG, by the way. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, um, really happy with the run. That one skip that was kind of annoying, but uh, everything else. Lucky. But this game has really good music and a um, really interesting story. So if you like want to hear the full story and um, I can 
definitely recommend this game. It's pretty yes, cool. It's also, it's also fun to figure out how to do the fights and stuff. Exactly. So in this run, the fights probably looked rather one-dimensional and straightforward, but this game has a very complex skill system that we did not really explore in this run. So if you're the kind of person to really who really wants to tinker around with like different builds and setups, then also we can definitely recommend this game. Exactly. So. Um... Well, I guess that was it with the sister. Thank you very much for the co-commentating, Gadaref. Thank you for having me. And um, yeah, you'll see me very soon again with Katana Zero. <laughs> so um, keep up. <laughs>